Google Pest Control Marketer Grow your business like never before Call 770-993-0004 Hello folks, this is Hal Coleman and welcome to another episode of Pest Control Marketing Live and the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. The only live streaming internet TV show that I know of in the world that's devoted totally to helping PCOs and WCOs get more customers, make more money, increase their sales, and more trip to the bank. And I'm here with the, as I say, the ever present, effervescent, and always pleasant <laughs> Mr. Online, Mike Stewart. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm good. I need to write that down. That that is a nice little rhyme that I'm just gonna just start announcing to the world. Effervescent, yeah. The ever pleasant, effervescent, always present, and uh, what else can I say? I don't know. I, I love it. I love it. So uh, I know you got some interesting subjects to talk about today. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sweltering in this heat. It's making me sweat trying to come up with a subject, but I'd be sweating even if I wasn't trying to come up. Well, with see, you're time stamping this, this broadcast because we got to make it evergreen. You know, somebody could be in the dead of winter going, he's <clears throat> well, turn your heat down, Hal, but we'll tell people this is July of 2022. And boy, is there a heat wave. Like yeah, Martin was- Vandela said, going to ha- have a big heat wave. I went to my rotary meeting today and at, uh, I got there at 11 o'clock and it was 90 degrees. That's I tell you, it, <clears throat> this is, this is a little off subject, but I got to talk about mm-hmm. it. You know, we, I go look at the weather channel and the other day it said it was 98 degrees and feels like 115. And I go, well, how do you know how it feels like? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that true? That's and, how I- and, and they say they have a scientific formula to uh, calculate wind speed, humidity, barometric pressure, and the current static temperature they, to know what it would feel like to the skin of a human being. Yeah, well, that's like the uh, uh, the heat index, you know, or the... Yeah, the, well, uh, it's like wind chill, chills. chill factor, you know. They say it's 28 degrees outside, but it feels like it's 15. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, I understand. I, I understand wind chill uh, can make it, it, but see, that almost makes sense. But, <clears throat> but, but you go outside, there's no wind to speak of. It's it, let's put it this way. When I walk outside now, it feels like I'm walking into uh, a, an oven and it's uh, amazing. It's amazing. It, it, well, it, it, that ain't what we're here to talk about, but I thought since you, since you talked about the heat wave and the fact this is July 22, We'll we we'll time stamp this broadcast. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, what is the evergreen information that you want to talk about today? Well, let me ask you a question, Mike. <laughs> if you want to if if uh if I give you a mathematical equation like 52 times five plus six, and, and I've got an answer, and you plug a wrong number in there somewhere. What happens? I get a wrong answer. You get a wrong answer. If I tell you, uh, Mike, there's some money in my safe over here, uh, and I'm going to give you that money. All right. Uh, uh, the combination is, is uh, 39, 22, 40. Right. And you come back over here and you say, Hal, I tried the combination and the door won't open. I tried it 10 times and I said, well, did you do 39, 22, 40? And you say, well, 40, 41, 39, I can't remember. It was close. Are you going to come back with the money? No, no. I mean, that, it, it's, it's like on the internet when people say, what's your password? Well, you know, the minute somebody says, I think, mm-hmm. now, there is no thinking to combinations to safes. And there's no thinking to passwords. It is what it is or it's wrong. Yeah. You know, Mark Twain once said the difference between the almost right word and the right word is like the difference between a lightning bug and light. Yeah. And, and and let me let me give you another little illustration on, on that, that the word part. 
let's suppose god forbid it ever happened but you're walking down the streets of nashville up there where you live and all of a sudden somebody comes up behind you and puts a gun to your head and forces you into the trunk of a car and slams the lid what are you going to immediately start doing well, after I panic and swallow my tongue and, and, and my heart beats through my chest of fear, I'd probably go, is there a way to get out of here? Yeah, probably a way to get out. But you're most likely at some point going to start yelling, aren't you? Yeah. If, 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 you're you're going to be yelling. scream, yell. You're going to do anything you can. because be, What are you going to be yelling? Hell. 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 Get me out of here. Help! Somebody get me out of here! No, now you'd probably say, "I'd like a martini." Now, yeah. Now, do you think possibly that you might, instead of yelling "help," yell "assist me"? Assist me! No, Somebody no. assist me! Of course, not. remove me from this location. I am not pleased with my predicament. I am not pleased with my so, predicament. So what would happen if you were walking through a parking lot, let's say at a Walmart, and you heard a noise, somebody yelling, help, help me, help me. Yep. That would generate a response in you of probably trying to find out where that was coming from and see if, if you need to help somebody. Absolutely. But what if you heard somebody yelling, assist me. Assist me. <laughs> Assist me. It's going to generate a different response. Well, it's going to be confusing. It's going to be confusion. That's right. But if you go into the dictionary and you look up the word assist, it says to help. Right. If you look up the word help, it says to assist. <laughs> So the word they are help, synonyms. The word help and assist mean exactly the same thing. But they will they will generate different responses in different circumstances. Uh, remove me from this location means exactly the same as get me out of here. But one will generate help, which is what you want. And the other one will generate confusion, which is what you don't want. Yeah. So the difference in the almost right word and the right word is like a lightning bug in lightning. And, 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 and you get that, I know. And I hope the people listening to it understand what I'm saying, that that's what we call the buying vault in somebody's brain, where they keep all the money uh, locked up in their brain. Uh, Certain words and phrases and combinations of words in the proper sequence will cause that buying vault in their brain to swing open and they'll take out their credit card and they'll give you the money. You can come away with the money if you understand how to unlock the buying vault in their brain. Now, if I give you the combination to my safe over here, uh, I keep a lot of valuable things over there, you know. Uh, I keep my written contract with you. <laughs> uh, but no, if if I if I give you the combination to my safe, it does you absolutely no good whatsoever, unless you know one other thing. What do you think that is? Go ahead and tell me because I had an issue I had to go take care of. So okay. I'm, I'm going to admit to the listeners, I wasn't listening. In fact, I need you to go solo here for about two minutes. Okay. Well, that's fine. If you, if I give you the combination to the safe and say, here it is, go open the safe. It doesn't do you one bit of good unless you know one other thing. And that is, how to work a combination lock. You've got to know how to work a combination lock or the, the combination is useless to you. Uh, I just got through teaching my grandkids this. My, my granddaughter's about to go in, will be going into middle school uh, this next fall. And so they just got their 
she went out and bought her lock. They told her she has to have a combination lock for her. She'll have a locker now. And uh, so I've spent uh, a couple of weeks ago some time teaching her to open a com- how to open a combination lock. It's not a digital lock. It's the regular old timey one that you twist the little knob around. So to open that, that uh, to have the combination to the buying vault in the customer's brain, you got to know how the brain works. Uh, buying decisions uh, come from the subconscious mind, not from the conscious mind. Uh, and they're all based on emotion. And you've got to know how the brain works. Just the combination alone uh, won't get it done. I could give you the words and the phrases, but you've got to know the sequence to put them in. you got to know, here's what I want you to say. And here's how you say it at the right time. Here's when you say this. Here's when you say this. And here's when you say this. Because if you get them out of order, if you get the words and phrases out of order, it's just like getting that combination out of order uh, on my daughter's combination lock. So you have to be able to understand. You have to know how to work a combination lock or else the combination doesn't do you good. So same way with the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what uh, I want to talk about today is the... the, uh, Sequence. We talked a while back about the, the what I call the secret combination, which is uh, telling people, "Here's who I am. Here's what I've got. Here's what it'll do for you. And here's how you get it." And the and the icing on the cake is, "Here's why you need to get it now." Right. Right. Uh, that's the uh, the the the. Uh, Make, making them understanding how to make them that uh, irresistible offer. You know, there's been times when I've called you up in the past and I say, Mike, man, I got this great idea. Listen, listen to this. Uh, I want you to, I want to see if you're interested in partnering with me on this idea I have. And more than once you've said to me, all right, I'm listening. Make me an offer I can't refuse. And, and that's what I try to do. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's what we have to do with our customers. It's knowing and, and you spend your time when we work with a client uh, and I spend my time with them looking at all the things that they have, both online and offline. Their internet marketing, their websites, their social media, their Facebook page, all of the stuff that they're doing. And we look and see where they're doing it almost right. And we help tweak it to get it right. And I'm I'm hearing an echo also. I don't know if it's showing up. Yeah, I'm right. trying to control it here. If it's on our recording or not, but yeah, uh, it, it might not be. But but anyway, I'm backing things off a little bit. Okay, I um, can just barely hear it now. Did you did you get finish your thought there? Because I got some things yeah. I can add. Yeah, you go right ahead. Well, you know, one of the most highest the, the high the people that were compensated more money in my internet marketing history were the copywriters. Uh, Great copywriters that were colleagues and friends of mine. Uh, You know, one of the things that Dan Kennedy is, he was an amazing copywriter to begin with. Um, And can I, for one second, people, bricks and mortar people that are listening to what we're saying that might say copywriting means getting a copyright on a product or something like that. That's not what we're talking about. Copy is words that you write. The right words. Putting the right words on paper. That's what you're writing copy. Right. They they called it copywriting, but it's, it's, it's the correct, it's the correct message to get to your market. Yes. And, and, and these guys were experts at, at, there's multiple types of advertising. There's multiple types of messages. There's direct response messages. There's image and branding messages. And, you know, our mentors have always said, that too many people think they need a brand. They think they need a message of warm and fuzzy. We're going to make your life wonderful, you know, but there's no, you got a problem. We have the solution. Call us direct response series. And like I was saying, some of the most highly compensated people that I ever met were people like David Garfinkel, Jay Abraham, um, uh, Michael Fortin. uh, the, The list goes on and on of these incredible wordsmiths that's what they were they were wordsmiths they they knew in fact joe vitale was a guy i got to know 
meet. He was in a movie called The Secret. And Joe was a copywriter or a wordsmith. Is he still and around? He's still around. Yeah. In fact, I've read uh, two or three of his books. They're yeah. Uh, Joe is, is brilliant. Joe came up with uh, the, the top 100 hypnotic words. What he considered were hypnotic words. Help is a hypnotic word versus assist me as an example. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you're affecting more of the, of your fellow human beings by screaming, help me than you would by assist me. So there are certain words that conjure different feelings, emotions, and responses, and choosing those words wisely in a proper sequence will get your ultimate message. What, what is your message as a pest control owner? Um, person's got a problem, you're going to fix it and charge them a fair price and, and do it professionally. That's the message that they got to believe, that you're going to show up, charge them fairly, take care of their problem, be professional, respect their home. I mean, there's all these things that are... Not rip them off, be fun to deal with, be safe, you know, uh, be legal. And, and you got to convey that message that compared to your competitors, you're the choice. And so, you know, like, I, like I said, uh, copywriters or wordsmiths used to make amazing amounts of money. They, I knew one guy that charged $30,000 for a one-page sales message for a website and got it because people who were smart knew that if they tried to do it themselves, letting him, who was a creative wordsmith, say the right words was going to more than make their money back. Those and, right and, words are the combination to the safe. That I was and and what, what, yeah. what frustrates me is, you know, we've come across people, and I don't want this to be you, that you get side whooped by these branding agencies who sell you cookie cutter, warm and fuzzy. You know, I've seen all these web uh, pest control websites, the family on the blanket with the puppy dog stock photo out in front of their house in their lawn. And it, and it just doesn't say anything. You know, there's nothing there to convince you that your problem is going to get solved. And, and I've actually talked to people like that. I said, well, what is this saying? Well, it's saying that they, you know, they're able to go out in their front yard and have a picnic without being, you know, uh, accosted by insects. I said, what's that got to do with termites? The termites ain't going to cost them on their blanket. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I say, if you think people are going to figure out that message that you take care of their termite problems by seeing a picture of a family on a blanket, you don't know what your message is. You don't know how to convey your message. But, you know, once again, it goes all back to Dan Kennedy things. And, and I, I argue with people. I actually lose business because people think what they want is what they need. And what I do doesn't work. So my attitude is, if you don't like what I have to say, then I'm not your guy. That's okay. You, that's your choice. But here's the truth. There are, I know more rich, direct response marketers that have the right message to their market than warm and fuzzy people, you know, with $10,000 websites with stock photos on it that they, I, that I'll say, well, what was, the, how many customers are you getting off your website? And the answer nine times out of 10 is, well, I don't know. Well, it's because as John Reese said, you can't improve what you don't measure. So you've got to measure it and you've got to learn. In fact, one of the things I talk about is the big three ways of getting people to your message. I can get people to your message, but if those words are not correctly direct response sequenced with hypnotic words, the right words, you can, you can drive all the human beings you want to, to your, to your message. They're not going to respond. So Anyway, yeah. uh, you're right. I can't drill this enough. Be objective. Look at your website. What is your message in your market? You know, and it's not just your website. It's your vehicles. It's your business cards. It's your brochures. It's your door hangers. It's what your elevator speech at a networking meeting. It baffles me how many pest control companies don't attend networking meetings. Referral partners, how you get referral partners, the letters you send referral partners. I mean, the, the, the message is delivered in a multitude of ways. But if you don't even know your message, you know, you, what did you tell me years ago? Um, you you had this complicated elevator speech. I can't and, even remember what I told you this morning, much less years ago. Yeah, you know, well, you said you had some big, long, complicated. Oh, I had, I had an elevator speech that uh, 
I worked on really hard. I'd stand up and say, I'm Hal Coleman with North Fulton Exterminating. We create a safer, healthier living environment by eliminating insects, rodents, and other pests that can cause serious disease and damage to your home. And I th that's exactly the way pest control people want to be portrayed, you know. Right. Uh, that's not and, wrong. And but it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It was almost right, but I had a, a, a copywriting expert that came to speak to our group, and he evaluated everybody's message. And he convinced me that instead of saying, I'm Hal Coleman, we create a safer, North Fulton Exterminator, we create a safer, healthier living environment by eliminating insects, rodents, and other pests that can cause serious disease to your home. He got me to change it to, I'm Hal Coleman with North Fulton Exterminating. We kill bugs <laughs> and we kill bugs sold me more, more business. And, and I had a guy, you, you, you may not remember this, but before I sold my business, this was probably uh, 17, 18 years ago. It was the first live workshop I ever did it was down at, at Univar chemical company in Atlanta. They, they gave me their training room to do a, workshop and they wanted to bring pest control companies in so i charged 997 dollars to come to this workshop and it was a one-day workshop had about a dozen pcos came to it uh and i talked about that and one of the guys who uh became became a dear friend of mine through the years and he he had a business down in Valdosta, georgia and he told me later on a couple of years he said you know I went home and put weak little bugs on the side of my truck, like you had on yours. And he said that one thing paid for my workshop and has been paying me ever since. He said, there's no way I can tell you how much business that I've sold because I had weak little bugs on the side of my truck. And see, people used to see me come and they'd say, hey, here comes that guy that kills bugs. And they'd introduce me. He'd say, come here, I'm going to meet a friend of mine. He kills bugs. This is how so it just became like a uh, it became like an earworm kind of thing and a mantra and people have bugs. What do you think people want done to their bugs, Mike? They they, they don't want to keep them as pets. No, I don't know. Feel. They don't want to pay somebody a lot of money to come in, live trap them, and safely remove them to a secret location and <laughs> release them unharmed. They want them dead. So there's a guy that kills them. So it's so See, that's what reaches the buying ball. That reaches the subconscious mind. Right. Direct, it's tangible language that goes straight to the combination law. But we create a safer, healthier living environment by eliminating insects, rodents, and other pests that can cause serious disease. Damage your home. These people stop and start thinking. And when you're trying to sell somebody pest control or a small ticket item, like you, the last thing you want them to do is to sit down and have to think about it. Right. I was assuming that by saying that, they would determine that I kill both. Well, so I, I got three things to say. When you assume something, that makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah, you need to show that in writing. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, a, that's exactly right. And, uh, and, a, and a thing I learned at a seminar years and years ago, that you, you, you're, you that comparison there, that's why clarifying your message everywhere, website, everywhere, that message has got to be consistent everywhere. But the, um, there you assume go. <laughs> makes an ass out of you and makes me. A, uh, makes an ass out of you and me. <laughs> well, and the other thing that, 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 you know, your first elevator speech or your first message, marketing message, when you reduce it, you know, we used to, you've heard of the kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, stupid. Anytime you make it more complicated, I mean, safe. And I don't even remember what I said because it was too many big words, but we kill bugs. Three simple words that resonate with me. So keep it simple. And, and I'll tell you something I learned years ago when it comes to direct response marketing. A confused mind, you're a customer, a confused mind always says no. That's right. So the minute your message is confusing, that happy family with puppy dogs on a blanket on, on a green lush yarn, yarn with a beautiful home in the background, and it says, 
uh, they could have been sitting out there because their house burned down because they didn't have an alarm system in there. Right. Somebody's trying well, to sell I, them an alarm system. You, you know, I, I, it could be lawn services. It could, it could be blank real estate, house painting, now, insurance, life insurance. And so now uh, you're confused. It just needs to be a simple message that's direct response and 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 uses hypnotic words, the right words, not the almost right word, the right word. And it gets a response. And you know what the response you want is either the phone ringing, the text coming in, the emails coming in, however you want to communicate with people. I know there's a lot of young people, you know, I want to get texts. Well, baby boomers don't text. So you better take, you know, if somebody sends you smoke signals, uh, you should respond to them. Pony Express, homing pigeons. It doesn't homing pigeons. I don't care what it is, because the thing is, if you want to grow your business, you better have a great message with the right words and respond to the people that, that get it. If somebody in 30, you know, a third of a second goes, oh my God, that's the guy who can solve my problem. I'm going to get in touch with him in the modality that I want to. Everybody, everybody doesn't like text. Everybody doesn't like, I mean, I know how to do all technologies of communication, but the point is, is I will take whatever it takes to connect with that customer. And, and that's, that's what we're trying to talk about is the right that, word. That's why you and I complement each other so well. I help them put together all this, these messages and copywriting, and you show them how to expose it to thousands of people. Right. And, right. and Mr. Online and Mr. Offline. But we, we work together there. But you know a lot about copywriting, too, and I know a lot about Internet marketing. But I, don't, I always defer to you on that because you know a million times more than... I tell people sometimes, I say, well, here's what... I think Mike Stewart would say to you, but you need to call him and ask him. And he may tell you something totally different because he knows a lot more about it than I do. But I think he's going to tell you this, but I'm not sure. And then well, sometimes they'll say, well, I talked to him. He, he agreed. Or they'll say, no, he told me about that I need to do this. I said, well, go with what he told you, not with what I told you. But I got well, I'm going to tell something for people to do right now. I got up on the screen. There are people watching the video. And if you're not watching the video and you're listening to the podcast, there's two places, two things that you need to get in your head. Bestcontrolmarketer.com. <coughs> you need to go there and look at what Hal has. But better yet, you need to call him at 770-993-0004. 770-993-0004. And don't text to it because that's a landline. And I yeah. won't get it if you text to that yeah. number. He, won't, he wants to talk to he wants to hear your voice. He hear wants to hear voice. what your problem is. Call him up and, and and talk to him about what he can do with helping your business. And and that's, you know, we we, we give a, a lot of information away for free because we know it'll help people. But some people need that extra help, that one-on-one -on -one help. And I do the same thing. Uh, my phone number is still a Georgia phone number, even though I'm in Tennessee, 770-826. 3662. If you just want to have a conversation or you want to have me look at what's going on with your website and, and you, you can take the, uh, direct, um, you know, you, you, I'm not there to criticize what your webmaster did. I'm there to talk about what works. And, and the point is, is, is if your message is confusing, your customers are going to say no. And, and I'll be honest with you. Your website is not the only thing on the, in the online world that bring, generates a lead for you. There's so many things. There's a thousand little things. So call me, 770-826-3662. And then, of course, if you haven't downloaded Hal Coleman's book, How to Grow a Pest Control Business at howtogrowapestcontrolbusiness.com, do yourself a favor. You know, how, it's F-R-E-E, -E, a hypnotic word, free. People love free. Well, now, wait a minute. They can buy it for $30 on Amazon if they prefer to do that. Well, you know? if you'd rather give Hal some money to Amazon and you like to hold a physical book in your hands, go to Amazon and search How to Grow a Pest Control Business by Hal Coleman. And you can buy the book. And that way, you don't have to look at it on a computer or a tablet or a phone. But if you if you don't believe it's worth 30 bucks, then go get it for free. It costs you a name and an email address. That's all it costs you. So, uh, Hal, I think we've We've pretty much covered this. Any last words you want to say before we call it a day? Three words. What's that? We gotta go. <laughs> All right. Well, be sure to get Hal's book. And thank you so much, guys, for attending this uh, particular episode of the Pest Control 
Marketing Podcast. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him, Mike, at InternetAudioGuy.com. Google Pest Control Marketer. Grow your business like never before. Call 770 